Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. I'm, I'm guessing my math is going to be incorrect. So if you're listening to this, oh. Um, back-to-back shows where I play the same intro. Welcome into episode 371. Uh, you're trying to change the narrative of your M Chuck is what you're trying to do. You're the bad math guy, but you're trying to get everyone to think that's bag milk. I think the intro says something different, so I don't know. I will admit to being a bad math guy. I own it. Now hold on, hold on. Are your earphones on the outside of your hoodie? That's right. This is the industry. <laughs> good God, it's the year three thousand kind of filter. Yep. Feeling good, keeping everything in tight. Keeping things in check in the right position. Is your hearing good enough that you can listen through fabric? My hearing is excellent, actually. For a guy with all your guar concerts. You know what? That reminded me that on Friday I was very, very bummed out that I did not go to Slipknot. I saw videos on TikTok and Instagram. People were having a good time at Slipknot, and I should have been there. Sad about it. (laughs) Yeah, it consumed my uh, my feed. A lot of people were at that concert. A lot of people didn't know what they were doing at that concert. And they just went because it was like a, one of the first so concerts do. to go to. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the things you do, man. Like, it's like I was telling Wanya the other day, I went to Guar in that exact same scenario where I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know any Guar songs. I just ended up having the best time because you're people oh. watching, you're having a good time in the environment. Oh my God. The, scene is the humanity game. circus is out for Guar. Uh huh. I loved it. My favorite Guar song is. <laughs> I love that one. It's one of the most popular ones, I believe. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not familiar. I'm a big Guar fan. That's uh, track one through six on the greatest hits. The lyrics really—they really spoke to me. Uh, that yeah, band, I remember like seeing clips of it when I was little, being like, "That's not for kids to know about." That's disgusting. Yeah, they had like blood and sperm and shit sprayed all over the crowd. Shocked the hell out of you. Yeah, that's wild. Kid. Although, but then at the same point, towards the end of their set, I remember them covering the Pet Shop Boys, and it really caught me off guard. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh, the rain. They did a uh, they a Whitney Houston song to wrap it all up. <laughs> they West End Girls, but it was great. I loved it. They did West End Girls. Yeah. They fucking with like their weird it. singing voices or they actually sang it properly. 100%. They did their thing. They did the full Guar thing. It is excellent. Good. West End Girls. Oh, God. You know who I heard is amazing in concert, which is kind of mind blowing, but not really, is Weird Al Yankovic. I, I could buy that. I'd buy that. I read an article on like, I think it was in. Rolling Stone or something online. And it was like, you wouldn't believe it, but Weird Al is one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. And he just gives her, he's got a full backup band and shit. He has huge concert tours, apparently. Our hey, in-house I'm- technology master, Big Mike, is a big Weird Al fan. Put shit out still, man. As a fun fact. A fun that fact. is a fun fact, indeed. Yes. He's the only guy Michael Jackson ever let cover his music. That is wild. Isn't that weird? It was and like an alien ant farm. Fame. Didn't alien didn't alien ant farm cover him? Dead then. Post dead. Uh, yeah, post post bless his heart. But like at the height of his game, he let him make eat it. Uh, he also this covered uh, um, "Smells Like Teen Spirit," which was uh, he got Kurt Cobain Kurt Cobain's blessing for that one, which was a surprise to him. He expected him to say no, but he said, "Yep, have a have a go. Looking forward to seeing what you do with it." They're making I, a movie and Daniel Radcliffe is uh Weird Al, hey? Oh really? really? Yeah, he's playing him and apparently he does a really good job of it. Huh. I, I you know what? Weird Al is a story that needs to be told. I think it is. I have, I have a sneaking suspicion he's lived a really interesting life. And oh, he yeah. made a trillion dollars. Yes. You know what? We need to get one of those music box style documentaries on Weird Al because I didn't think I was going to care about Kenny G and I ended up caring about Kenny G when that one was over. What's, so I'd love what's to see music it. box. Kenny G. What's that mean? That was the one that's on Crave. It's like those uh, 90 minute music documentaries. There was the one on Juice World. Uh, it was a real bummer. Oh, uh, yeah. They, yeah, I've seen that yeah. one. There's one did, on Kenny G. They did Kenny G. Yeah, they did Alanis Morissette. This, DMX. Kenny G, I bet you is just swimming in chicks. Kenny oh, G is money. swimming in cash. Yeah, that is what yeah. he is swimming in. Yeah, there is there is bags of money at the end of the saxophone. Oh, you. Do you remember when is. Kanye West got for Kim Kardashian a room full of single roses and Kenny G standing in That's the middle in the, playing the, the documentary. saxophone? Oh, it's one of the baldest things ever. How much money do you have to pay Kenny G to come over to your house 
He's standing oh, in a he, kook room. Full Kenny of G stuff. doesn't move for pennies, man. That guy, <laughs> it's going to be big dollars. Yeah, yeah. He's not getting out of bed for nothing. It's like David Copperfield. David Copperfield is so rich. He's been living on private islands since like the 80s. He somehow made that much money making the Statue of Liberty disappear. I saw him in Vegas and I had a great time at that show. So rich. Doesn't age. No. Well, I don't, like know if, I don't know if the old skin allegedly, in my opinion, could be pulled back any further on that guy's face either. Well, yeah, yeah, he's 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 leveraging all the tips and tricks. Yeah, it's 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 at its breaking point. <laughs> I remember seeing Wayne Newton in a documentary, just like what he looked like. <laughs> he was like ninety going on thirty, and it was terrifying to see in four K. Uh, David Copperfield's net worth, according to wealthygorilla dot com, is one billion dollars. Oh, I can trust Whoa. a wealthy gorilla. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And that guy, that guy has been. Working 200 nights a week in Vegas, yeah. making sheets upon sheets every oh, night. Oh, yeah. No band for to pay hundreds of years. Yeah. <laughs> hundreds of years. Literally. He doesn't even have to update the show either. You just go in and you like it or you get the fuck out. Like he could take his first year earnings, put it in a GIC at 4%, and it would compound to a billion dollars in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he married to Claudia Schiffer? Oh, I feel like there was a connection there. Yeah, that sounds familiar. What a life. My God. Imagine being a kid and like being the nerd doing magic. And you're like, no, you know what? Before it's all said and done, I'll be married to Claudia Schiffer, worth a cool B, and I'll make the Statue of Liberty disappear, you yeah. bitch. That is a, man, that is a very random piece of David Copperfield knowledge you knew there. Because, yep, they were married in the early 90s. That is a power couple from the 90s. I saw a thing about him. It was just like David Copperfield is living the dream and then explained his life. And I was like, damn, David. He has been named a living legend by the U S library of Congress as of 2006, 2006, that's 16 years ago uh, for using bag milk math. Your M Chuck math. That's 300 years ago. Mm-hmm. Good God. He sold 33 million tickets and grossed over 4 billion more than <laughs> any other solo entertainer wow. in the history by a large margin. Take that care. He's the highest paid celebrity entertainer ever. It said, no, uh, he is, uh, gross over 4 million, uh, 4 billion more than any other solo entertainer in a history. Solo by a entertainer. Margin. Like more than Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. My, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Do you think there's a part of the appeal that they marry these people just so they can find out how the tricks are done? That's valid. Hmm. They marry I mean, that. Like, like you marry David Cobbfield to find out how the sauce yeah. is made. I tried Pretty to marry much. Roy to find out what the tigers are like. Didn't work. Well, fun fact, uh, Siegfried and Roy's One of those tigers is 120 million. Siegfried? Combined. combined net worth for Siegfried and Roy. Combined you got to think it took a hit when the tiger ate Roy. You got to think that wasn't a good <laughs> well, day that's why, the balance sheet. Yeah, that's Minus the one ticket Roy. sales down. <laughs> Yeah, and that if, was the best, we really, best show ever. If we really want to dig do, deeper into this. Uh, Houdini's net worth is five hundred thousand. Yeah, uh, he was Houdini, before his time. Though. Rap group. Yes. If anybody knows who Houdini is, bag about here about. Well, you're immortal. You probably remember '80s mm-hmm. rap group Houdini. Of course. Um, we should we should have like a recurring game on the show where. I throw out, they were. I throw out two celebrities and you try and you guys have to guess who has a higher net worth according to this website. Oh, that's a great game. So if I pen that's from Penn Pen from Penn and Teller, just one half of the duo, Penn, the one that talks, yeah. worth two hundred million. Wow. I've always wanted to see they've their been show. cranking out these shows, like you said in Vegas for five nights a week for thirty years. Yeah. Carrot I've top, to what's to he worth? Too. Yeah, Carrot Top. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good one. He's preposterously like rich. Yeah, because he's been at the Luxor for strict, a thousand though, years now. Oh, no, he's at the Luxor. Okay. I'm like, yeah. he's off the one after that is um, the guy, the magician with all the crosses. What was his name? Oh, Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Yeah, he's 70 million, too. 70 million for Carrot Top. Mm-hmm. What? Man. Chris Angel. The props uh, pay. 150. 150 is twice Oh, sorry, sorry, rich. sorry. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Is this the that's trustworthy so news entity, wealthy gorilla speaking? Who's no? Who are that's you how much you generated. <laughs> yeah, that's how much you generated uh, in revenue in 2010 at 150 million. Uh, Chris Carrot Angel is 50 million. Oh, so Carrot Top's got Chris Angel. 
You're right, Chuck. Find two celebrities right now. Okay. And we'll do we'll play this game. Okay. We will. I like this game. I'm gonna throw you guys one right off the bat. I may so on the sidebar of this website, it just keeps spitting up random ones. So I was oh, on nice. I was on 50 cent. So who has the higher net worth as of 2022? 50 cent or daytime TV star Rachel Ray? Oh, oh Rachel, Rachel Ray's Ray. got big game. Smoke Rachel Ray. Yeah, yeah she got like that million money. a year. She's got the whole distribution. She's books. She's TV. She's, she's yeah. a line of cook stuff. She's, she's everything. got her own cookware. Yeah, I'm gonna get Rachel Ray as well. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go against the green here. I'm gonna say fifty. So according to the site, Fifty Cent's net worth has fallen from 150 million to just 30 million in recent Whoa. years, while Rachel Ray has held solid at a net worth of 100 million. She's getting paid. What happened to 50? He got in that lawsuit, remember? Because of SMS audio, he like stole headphone designs and then lost a huge lawsuit. <laughs> Damn. God. But now he's making all those shows. So 50 Cent like makes like five different shows for the Stars Network. And he's like making a huge bank. Hmm. All right. I heard a story the other day from Steve Harvey that he... For about five years, he had an accountant that he was giving his, like he was paying the oh, yeah. returns, what he had to, what he had to give to the IRS. And then when his accountant died, he went to his office and found five years of returns on the floor, unpaid, and that he owed in back taxes like twenty-two million dollars. He just stole the tax return money. I just stole the tax return oh, money. Did not no. pay the IRS. Oh yeah. wow. Oh, oh, what happened to Alanis? Alanis, the reason why she has a Broadway show is her financial advisor stole like thirteen million dollars from her. So, like, oh. terrible. You think you can trust them, and then you record jagged little pill, and then they can't be helped. They steal all your money. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Steve Harvey makes an estimated ten million dollars per year to host the feud. Chalmers. Good smoke, Chalmers. Don't think that we've forgotten that you're going to be on Canadians. <laughs> Family Feud. Wow. Because you would do not forget something with that good of an idea. <laughs> no. yeah. We're working on it. The, vid- the video, the video you shoot has liar. been the you video lie. shoot has been scheduled. We'll really? make your video wow. for you. We'll get Liam Horobin, I believe is his last name. Mm-hmm. He will make your video for you. Professional video man. I think that might be a better Come Kennedy gig. <laughs> Come to your house you and you all. I'm going to try to change the subject from that. You got two more celebrities for us here, Chuck? Stephen Colbert or Weird Al Yankovic? <laughs> oh, Weird my Al, God. Weird, Weird Al. Al. Weird Al. Uh, that guy owns the masters to his music. <laughs> I hope. He owns the actual masters. <laughs> and he's saving all that money because he's still rocking Tommy Bahama shirts. He's like the Steve Jobs look. Who's Star- richer? Tommy Bahama. Who, what's right? So again, we're going off Wealthy Gorilla. That's our source. Stephen Colbert is worth $75 million. Weird Al, just $20 million. Ah, what on earth? Yeah. No, we need to work on no, this. No, I don't yeah. trust the gorilla on this one. No, no, I yeah, the gorilla is wrong on this one. Uh, and that's okay. I'm gonna <laughs> download all of his tracks individually. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna pull a rick and pay a dollar twenty nine for each one on iTunes. That still rattles me. It's so what funny. Weird Al needs to do to ratchet up the value is he needs his own Dollywood. He needs like Weird Al land. Oh, he could have one. Oh, for sure he could. Um yeah. Here's Britney a couple Spears heavy hitters. Christina Aguilera. Oh, it's gotta oh. be Britney Spears. Wow, Christina Aguilera did all those show hosting. Yeah, I know that's the what, voice. Yeah, but the uh, Britney was a, a mainstay in Vegas for a while. That is true. residency. Britney. So I'm gonna say Britney. I'm typing These as the fast as I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a left field one, but I'm curious about that. I'm yeah, you never know how much Britney got taken from her. Well, that's that is true. true. Yeah. That is true. Lots to consider here. All right. Wealthy Gorilla. Mm -hmm. Christina Aguilera, 160. Britney Britney Spears, 115. The voice put her over the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I feel Britney will catch up. And uh, here's a here's a heavy hitter Uh, one for you. You think Britney's got big opportunities in front of her now that she's free? Matt Matt Damon or Ashton Kutcher? Ashton Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher. big, big, big investor. He's a, yeah, he's a big investor. Ashton uh, Kutcher's loaded, Matt Damon, loaded. though, has been in more movies. I feel like he got a lot of yeah, but but Ashton I Kutcher's bet. probably made. Oh, yeah, I bet you it's hilariously the difference between the two. I, I bet Ashton I heard Kutcher's some, net worth yeah. starts with a B. 
No. So again, according to the site, Kutcher is 200 mil. Damon is 170. So it's close. Mm. Oh, okay. 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 Who's richer? Chris Kirkpatrick. <laughs> or Joey, Joey Fatone. Fatone. Yeah. <laughs> or, Kevin Ri- or Kevin Richardson. You got you to cross like, over between the two. Really crappy back before. But no, I want to know Joey Fatone against Chris Kirkpatrick. So it's Fatone. Wealthy Gorilla does not have Chris Kirkpatrick, but another oh, no. website does. Oh, Chris and it, Kirkpatrick. And it has, oh. uh, has him at 13 million. Now, who is oh, the other one? Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone. Joey yeah. Fatone. Joey Fatone did TV work and stuff after. Yeah. He, well, he was a big track Greek wedding. Yeah, oh, does it's, true. it's tight. They say 14. Come oh, on. It's a win. To win, you know who the richest is other than Timberlake is um, JC uh, Chazé. Joey, no Joey McIntyre, <laughs> no <laughs> Jordan Knight. Jordan Knight is like a huge real estate investor in Boston, and he's made like hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. yeah, he took his new kids' money and invested in Boston. Okay, so that takes me to something. Now I'm I'm seeing that uh, <laughs> oh, Derek, the the show. By the way, this is a oh, no. great podcast. Backstreet Boys, no Backstreet Boys have a tour that's like yeah, coming up going. Everything. A world tour. Yeah, it's coming to Edmonton this summer. Now, is this a sad tour or is this like Rolling Stones that go out and like, how do <laughs> we feel about this? Why is it oh, a because awesome. it's like, well, they don't need the money. Like a, Chris Kirkpatrick's got 13 in the bank. Because nobody <laughs> ever thought like about like, different bands. Everybody always wanted to go see the Rolling Stones. It was like, yeah, I just right. wanted one last chance to see the Rolling Stones. So it was never like they were holding on. But does this well, one feel to you? they like, are 90s either, for God's sake. <laughs> but doesn't it feel like the Backstreet Boys are kind of holding on? Like, I don't know. Holy God. What else does Nick Carter buddy, have? Buddy, if I get, if, if someone gave me tickets, I would go. I'm absolutely going Didn't to Didn't they just come a couple tickets. years ago? Yeah. yeah they come every the block, six Backstreet months. Backstreet like. They came with new kids on the block. Yeah. They There's something different when you and it was tired, so sold out. <laughs> when you have well, 53 year old men doing the bye 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 dance, it's just kind of seems a little it. more. How dare, yeah, buddy. How dare you? How <laughs> dare so many you? cougars. Once so again, many that's cougars. an insane song. God, you guys, come on. You know what I'm dirty. Pull it together. Okay, you doing the doing back. the remember, remember when they're all dressed up as like the yeah, werewolf and the Dracula. Back. Yeah, I'm doing it right yeah. now. Okay, so doing that dance as 52 year old men. Doesn't it seem a little more sad than just like uh, somebody from the Stone. Who was the lead? Who was the guitar player for the Stones? Uh, Ron Keith Wood. Richards? No, Keith Richards. No, yeah, it's the drummer. That's, Keith I'm Richards. Wondering. Watch something. So Keith Richards just shredding on the axe doesn't seem sad at eighty, but doing the no, he looked like Backstreet a so, warlock. Uh, Chalmers, to your point, Kevin Richardson. He is the oldest of the Backstreet Men. He just turned yes. fifty in October. He, he was too old, old to be a he boy. Was old to begin with. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was always much older. Yeah. He had the eyebrows of a seventy-year-old man, though, when he was twenty, that made him look. Older. He uh, he he's gone to the David Copperfield uh, School of uh, Hair Face dye? Beauty, I believe. Yeah. Oh, he looks horrific. Well, and his hair is still jet black. Also, I always find that to be a weird look. I got Nick a Carter, ponytail and a man his age. Uh, I don't know about that. Nick Carter, the baby of the group, Chalmers, uh, forty-two, just turned forty-two in January. Yeah, like I couldn't picture myself doing the Backstreet Boys video, dancing for three hours and not feeling well, like when I got backstage, I was bands. like, what is they can happening? can trade off, right? One yeah. guy can get some oxygen, regroup. Kevin Richardson looks exactly the same as he used to, by the way. <laughs> AJ, oh, not yeah, so much. That is not AJ. true. Well, AJ. Well, it's AJ lives weird. hard, though. Yeah. But it's weird. I saw an interview with him and he's guy. talking about how he lived so hard like a rock star. And I'm like, oh, hey, Jamie McLean, you bitch. He wasn't no rock star, but he actually was, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah for, for some reason, for him to be like a party animal to me seems like a bitch. Uh, he was like the Backstreet Boys documentary. What is that thing called? Uh, show him what you're made of. That one came out in yes. 2015. And that AJ was the was, one. Yeah, yeah. And AJ's talking about how the video for The Call, he was so coked out uh, that he doesn't oh, remember doing song. any of it. Oh, that's the greatest song. It's a, and then it's they made the As Long As You Love Me video where two of them married the girls cast to be their perfect woman. They went perfect. to each of them and was like, describe your perfect girl for the video. You're going to recruit her. And then two of them married the girl. What? But, yeah, man. That was the problem with uh, the with NSYNC, though. They didn't have a bad boy. Like, <laughs> to Maxine be married Boys, to Chris Kirkpatrick. Maxine, Chris Kirkpatrick. He was not a bad boy. He's a bad boy. That's like saying Fred Durst was a bad boy. And the headbands. 
He oh, did yeah. it. He had the dreads. He tried dreads. to do all the things. Bad. Nah, boy. he was no Donnie Wahlberg and he was no AJ McLean. Well, Donnie they, they couldn't Wahlberg hold a candle to those guys. Yeah. Donnie Wahlberg would knock you out. Donnie Wahlberg's on like an old people show on cable now. What show? Blue is he Bloods. On? Blue Bloods. Yeah, he's Blue a cop Bloods. now. He's a, like a show that old ladies watch while their husbands in the other room with like a pat machine snoring. They go out and watch Donnie Wahlberg and Blue Bloods. <laughs> Him and Method Man too, and that Fez from that '70s show. They've all had re resurgence. No. Really? Cops. Where's Fez? Oh, yeah. Fez is oh, like ma- printing money on one of those Doing shows. What? Really? I don't know. Solving crimes, bro. <laughs> Bow Wow was on one and blew all his money somehow or other. What a idiot! Finding the DNA. Bow Wow looks like hell. Does he? Yeah, yeah I saw. A oh my boy. god! I saw. I saw a picture of the, the Destiny's Child with Solange Knowles and Bow Wow, and oh like god, he Bow looks wow. like a like a baby. And in that picture, they're like, just remember, Bow Wow is the same age as Solange in this picture, and man, he <laughs> looked like he was like eight years old compared to. Her. How many of you There's guys can interview. say the the name of the actor Fez? Oh, Wilder Valderrama. Okay, oh, yeah, I I loved the show. Couldn't have told you his real name, um, but he has a net worth of twenty million dollars. You know the other guy, okay. the funny what, guy. What about Laura the... Prepon? What's her value? Up or down from Wilmer? Go ahead and Google yourself, Daniel Masterson. I don't think he's had a very good last ten years. A little bit lower, twelve mil. <laughs> Really? Wasn't she an orange? Well, he was on. He was on a show. Uh, uh, but he was on that I Netflix think, show before. Yeah, he got. And he, yeah. Hmm. I don't feel like that guy's a good guy. Which guy? Hey, Masterton. No, no, he sure is. I don't get championship vibes off him when I see him talk. And his brother se. was in. Uh, that guy's brother was in Malcolm in the Middle. Yep. What? Yeah, he was the yeah, older oldest. brother. The oldest is that Danny brother. Masterson's brother. Yeah, Chris no, Masterson. But he doesn't have a beard. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look alike to me. Uh, Didn't wow, Danny Masterson? Okay. Isn't he like going to jail for a while? He's a bad man. Yeah, he? he got canceled for good reason. I oh, believe. he's standing on trial for three counts of. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. There we go. Yeah, pretty big piece of shit. There you go. I feel like Fez is guilty of some shit too. He just hasn't been brought before a court. It's because his character he was a creep, right? Vibes either. What's that? Because his character was a creep. Like that's not a character you well, can throw into a show nowadays. A creep too. Oh, really? He dated a bunch of young starlets yeah. and was like a real shithead. Yeah. I read my celebrity blog, Jeremy Chuck. I read about two things: the Oilers and celebrity blogs. Should they intersect? I know about it first. Hmm? And they have before. <laughs> I'm a What's celebrity the biggest news? celebrity thing that ever happened to the Oilers. Let me think. While you're thinking about it, Wayne Gretzky news. on SNL. Oh yeah. yeah, or the Playgirl photo. Oh, the oh. Playgirl photo. Yeah, that was. That was oh, I thought deal. we were talking like more of a gossipy type of like Garth Brooks thing. picking up uh, Gilbert Brule. No, Bono picking up Gilbert Brule. Bono. <laughs> well, Mike Comrie marrying Hillary Duff. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That actually could be. Jared arguably, Stoll and Aaron Andrews is a little. It's it's oh, more now. Deal. Yeah, it's more now. Oh, Euler connection. And let's not forget Mary Strakowski marrying that Bond girl. The camera Petra, girl's Petra name. Kupa? Petra Nemkova. That was uh, yeah, Peter Nedved's wife. Like oh, yeah, that was Peter Nedved's wife. Yeah, Petra uh, Nemkova. Um, Isabella Skorkupa. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I saw her again yeah. once. Hardly a Bond girl. When, cup of, cup when, of coffee Bond girl, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, not the, not, not the main Bond March. girl. You're right. That was no. Femke Jansen. That's fine. Yeah. Eartha Kitt. Don't yeah. don't 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 try to give up your knowledge on Bond around Jr. He knows he knows his well, Bond. Yeah. yeah, and if I if I get and if I, and if you beat me, I'll be embarrassed. I can't believe anyone watched in the middle guy. It was Matt. Anyone watch brother. No Time to Die? Yep. Oh yeah. Fuck. God, that was great. That was good. Yeah. No spoilers. No spoilers. But I really definitely liked no it. spoilers. No spoilers. But it was good. Yeah. Oh, you're shot. Bond. Yep. You're letting us play too long. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, should we, yeah, should we talk hockey? Let's do this. <laughs> so close to clinching. How about Kendrick Lamar dropping a new album? And oh, I'm very excited about it. That I'm was on, on that was in my notes. Website. Overrated. How dare oh, you? Oh, that's. How dare you? <laughs> I will not. Is more of a Nelly guy. 
<laughs> I just baited the hook and I just threw it in the water. Uh, before we do that, Come give some water. love to DoorDash and Oodle Noodle. <laughs> Promo code Real Life DD gets you twenty five percent off and no delivery fees on your first order. Shout out to DoorDash. Come on, get your butt in your rub truck. Go, go, go! Ding you dong. have you have a ding dong. Do the Liam ding dong. Ding dong. Do the Liam ding dong. <laughs> Is that with an accent? Ding Liam dong. Ding dong. <laughs> Very good. Um, that guy could be taking you your application video, Chalmers. That guy could be at your house filming your kids to get you on Canadian Family Feud. Yep. Yeah, that's get his, you're you playing get his, it alone. Get his people in touch with my people and we'll get him. Ding we'll dong, it ding dong. That could be him at your door. I was just talking to Liam right before we started this, actually. Talking a little F1. Had to discuss. I'm almost caught up. You just gave him a call and you're like, hey, let's talk about this. Uh, no, he texted caught me. up. Man, I've been putting the work in. I got to get season four wrapped up before the race this weekend. That Grosjean crash, though, eh? Holy I couldn't cow. believe it. Oh, I, I was rattled about it for about an hour. Yeah, it was, it was scary. Yeah, it was scary. So I'm the man that walked through fire and his wife snickers. That's the best part. She's like, oh, rolls her eyes at him saying, I'm the man that walked through fire. <laughs> She's like, oh, God, I'm going to have to hear this for the rest of my fucking life. I thought that I love was that. dead for sure. Oh, yeah. Wow, but like, hey, it's- yeah, it's good. I mean, as, like the pace the at episode, which you hit the wall. Yeah, and as the episode was going on, I'm like, Netflix, this is really insensitive that you're just showing this fucking car on fire, man. Like, I'm having a hard time here. <laughs> yeah. Could we talk about something that maybe we could... Uh, I, I'm hoping that if we put this out in the universe, it will happen. But the one F1 Drive to Survive episode that I am longing for and that they oh have not my done God. is... Sorry, did you say F1 show we're going to be talking about? Just, just a quick one, just a one, an episode Ooh. idea. Okay. I think they haven't hit on it yet. And I am curious and I need to know this, but how do they transport everything they have in two weeks to the next country? We're Ooh, talking trucks. Okay. We're talking through like, they don't fly. Logistics this stuff. Questions. Like, yeah, no, they do. Just, I need to know planes. how planes, planes but planes. okay. They so legit fly cargo, cargo planes? planes or something. Yeah. Like that. Well, cargo planes. Just, just they they load them in. They win cargo planes. planes. Yeah. Don't you yeah. think you know it would the movie be 2012, Chalmers? You know the movie 2012? Where they're like never. taking the cargo plane up to the north to get on those ships? You never saw uh, that movie? Well, you know that. that cargo plane from that movie, the Russians destroyed it. Or Operation in, Dumbo Drop. In, in, their, in their military operation or whatever the hell they're calling it. In the Ukraine, <laughs> they think, killed the Antonov 220. Any, do you think any of the stuff they just keep, like they build like, how many races is there? All season. 22. 22. So they build 22, like just hangar areas so that they can just move the stuff in, or do they have to like take all that stuff down, all the garage walls, everything, ship it, mm. and then re erect it all and then the get their shops walls, up and the garage, running. The garages are already on site at every course. Okay, but do you see how they're walking to their offices and they have like yeah. a coffee bar? Do you think they have yeah. that office at every single <laughs> one? Or do you think that do you office see, gets moved? No, no, but, PGA do you, but, don't, but don't, they have all the little buildings. But don't you see up. how they're like modular looking? <laughs> they're exactly the same. Exactly. So load it up on a truck, ship it to your plane, fly it. Do you not see the globe? The cost I like that you're mad that? about this. I like that you're they, mad. They, they, the F one is good. Do you logistic. not hear the money that's spent in the F one? It's hundreds of millions of dollars a season. Yeah, and I think it's grossly being misused. I think that <laughs> they need to just build twenty two of these structures, put them up in each site, and then just move the, the the particular pieces that need to go to each place. I'm I'm just checking into sure. this conversation, but why don't they just drive the cars to the next city? Oh my God! Yep. Wow. Wow. So yeah. fast. Yeah, it's 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 like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so quick. Well, if it's anything like the Cars movie, I know that they mm-hmm. do put the cars on trucks, but sometimes they have to get them overseas. Ka-chow. So that's probably when they use the the the, the cargo van. I'm more talking the structures. Yeah. Like yeah. they're not going to boat them. I don't know. Like how long? Because they're going from Australia to Italy. How long does it take to boat something from Australia to? Yeah, Italy? no boats. I, know, I realized I realized really said how dumb that was when I when I said it. Um, so oh, also, planes, how many yes. how many cars did they bring with them to a race? You know, four. I the- think. I think they, they think they always should have a back. Like most, except for like if you're Haas or like a low budget team, they don't have backup cars. The other ones will have backup cars. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm almost I mean, done. I'm almost caught up. I'll be ready for Sunday morning. All right. Your REM check, you got to tell us about Nashville. Okay. So last time we talked was morning uh, or afternoon of game day. 
Um, so after we finished up real life, I went out on the town and met up for it with everyone, the whole group and everyone else was already you went and planted a flag. You went and planted the flag. Bravo. Well done. Mm-hmm. There was that uh, video that Jen Sharp posted where you made quite the entrance in a pub, my friend, where you had the flag as a, uh, as a Cape, you had the romper on and you were pointing at people. I always, I think I saw some <laughs> finger guns going. Oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, continue. That uh, was the confirm? third floor of Tootsie's. No, it wasn't Tootsie's. Um, oh, it wasn't. Oh, no. Uh, so, yeah, after we finished up the podcast, I went downtown. So much Oilers orange everywhere. Like Oilers fans took yes. over Broadway that afternoon and it was yes. really great to see. Um, I went to the bar. Everyone was already a handful of drinks deep. I was still violently hung over. So I was just slowly dipping my toes back into the old booze pond. Um but we got going eventually. We took over the Preds bar before the game. That was really good. And then we kind of did our thing where we like hung out outside the arena and like greeted Oilers fans as they walked in. So like we had a cool. bunch of really cool conversations. I was in my romper and I had the hope will never die flag on as a cape. I was just dressed like an absolute donkey. Um, but people liked it and they wanted selfies with me and whatnot. And uh, everyone wanted, you know, high five, get it let out a let's go Oilers. How much those cost? How much the selfies were you charging? Nothing yeah. free wow. for the people, God. man of the people. Yeah. Wow-y. I would take IOUs on drinks later that night, but no, I actually didn't do that. Um, who, who was, who was getting more selfies taken with them? You or mayor? So he, ah, cool. yeah, that was That's really cool. cool. That was so photo, cool. Man. Super Fuck. cool photo. I'm going to get that up at the office and get him to sign it. That's gang. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I also actually had a, I had a friend on one of my group chats who actually asked the question, was he on the nation vacation or was it just a coincidence that he was there? <laughs> I was like, Oh no, he, he booked a flight on Flair airlines with the rest of the boys. Yeah. And, uh, staying in the oh, best Western with, uh, Dan, or no, you were staying with Dan. He was staying with Waz. <laughs> How about Waz being cowboy Waz and then dry saddle man. Also Tyler, I loved I fucking loved how much shit you guys were all getting for not throwing your hats after a dry side of <laughs> trick. Yeah. Waz had just bought that ridiculous yet amazing cowboy hat. And I heard that he was getting it pretty good from people wanting him to chuck that thing. Yeah, you, he was. By the way, I tweeted it. That is now two road hat tricks by Dry Saddle for you, and not a hat was thrown. Because I wore the oh, same yeah. hat. There's only one hat that goes well with the romper. I'm not losing it. And we don't make well, these anymore. The romper is a big play. If if this was a hat that could be replicated and made again, I would have thrown it. But I didn't what want to. Hope will never die hat. I oh, see blue. Brad Stepanko hatless. Rick mm-hmm. hatless. Times two for these gents. Yeah. And yet there's our very own Tyler. Um, yeah, I did not throw my hat. Okay. I, I want to get to the game itself, but uh, the picture that was going around of us with Amarjeet Sohi is like a nice one where we're all looking at the camera, but in the front bottom left of that photo, there is a couple hugging with like their faces together. And I don't know who they are. I don't think <laughs> I, I'm not sure they were Edmontonians because I didn't see them on the trip or on the plane or anything. But a happy I couple that don't know why everybody else is so happy in the photo. Yes. And I think they even said, which one's the mayor and Amarjeet po- po- or uh, like pointed at Jared and was like, he's the mayor. <laughs> and they were like, oh, cool. Like, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an alternate angle of this photo of us with the mayor. I'm sending it to you guys in the group chat right now. And that couple is just like making out in front of him <laughs> and me and Amarjeet are like looking at each other being like, what is going on? Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. God. I like what this. a trip. That is a great photo. Is that, oh, like his wife and daughter are there, aren't they in that photo? Yeah. His, his wife and daughter were there. I think like his older brother was there as That's well. That's such an amazing moment. That's such Love an is in the air. Moment, man, for real. I just, yeah, a cool, cool photo. Yeah, I, uh, Nobody I am has a so jealous, mayor, especially somebody in a romper. I am so jealous you got to travel to a great city like Nashville, have a hell of a time, and the Oilers shell the opposing team. Yeah. Oh, that was such a, I was just feeling your vibe. And I was just sitting there laying in bed after the game, being like, they must be having so much fun. Yeah. There's so many vacation, nation vacations where we go out and we are celebrating a loss, and it just, it doesn't have the same juice. Mm-hmm. That, must have, that night, that, that, that post-victory night must have been awesome. 
So the cool part about Nashville compared to other spots like Calgary and Vegas, they're very spread out, right? Like you leave the game and a lot of people kind of go their own way. But in Nashville, because you literally walk out the doors of the arena and you're on Broadway, everyone there, White Avenue, everyone just sort of followed each other into the same spots. So like I have a video of a whole group of us going up the stairs to a bar and we're all just screaming a let's go Oilers chant. And then like we got to the rooftop of this one bar and it's just the whole rooftop is Oilers fans for the most part. And we're like dancing away and just having a good time. So it was really, really cool to get to hang out with that many Oilers fans for the entire night. Yeah. We're going to be doing Nashville next year. 100% again. Um, Nashville's arena is super nice as well. Um, Like really, really good. Like modern, even though it was built in like the late 90s, it looks like it's a brand new barn. It's spread out beautifully um, sitting next to Rick at the game. And I shared a couple of Rick cams because um, I was just filming oh, him. We and, told you it's an yeah. experience um, and it was hilarious. And then he had this beef going on with the lady sitting a row in front of us. <laughs> and it, it was really walking the line of like a friendly Ricky. beef and like actual beef because as the Oilers got up by more like she was getting more and more mad and she wouldn't even like respond to Rick's chirps she would just like hold up the bird and like point it back at him Uh, I was a little bit surprised there was it looked like at least on TV there was as many empty seats as there were considering where Nashville's at relative to the playoffs slash wild card yeah it was weird it was like a pretty quiet night at the barn Um, there was so there was one moment in the game when a guy got mad at me So like we had our fun with Preds fans and 99% of them were just kind of like laughing and giving it back to us and all that stuff. And then Rick and I were walking down from our seats (laughs) and we kind of like intersected with a row, like a string of Preds fans going out for the intermission. And I looked up at the banners and I said something along the lines of like, oh, that's weird, Rick. They don't have any Stanley Cup ones up there. I wonder where they put them. (laughs) like the dumbest low hockey humor joke ever. Right. And this guy who was probably in like his late fifties, he looks at me and he goes, yeah, you think that's really fucking funny. Don't you? Why don't you keep running your fucking mouth, buddy? And I was like, Oh, (laughs) yo, (laughs) sorry, dude. It's a joke. And I said that I was like, Hey, just a joke. And he was like, yeah, romper. He was like, yeah, you think you're really fucking funny. It's like, all right, sorry, dude. I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to speak up. I'm wearing a romper. (laughs) Sir, I don't know if you've noticed this. I'm wearing a flag as a cape. We are not on the same level right now. (laughs) So you had a. um, That night we were perusing around different bars, and there was one bar that I go up to the front, give the guy my my ID, scans it, gives it back to me, and then he just looks at me up and down, and he goes, "Yeah, you're not getting in here, man." And I was like, "What? What do you mean?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm not letting you in my bar." And I was like, well, I, wow. I was like confused. And he was like, you do not meet our dress code whatsoever. And oh, I was like, oh, color cape should I be wearing? <laughs> I, I guess that's fair, man. But like, I also like to think I was a vibe. And then the guy also wouldn't let bearded Brad in either with his tracksuit. I also like to think I was a vibe. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah. That's uh, a clap back. That's a, that's a Excuse comment, me, sir. comment right there. I am a vibe. Don't you know this? <laughs> yes. Uh, your dress code doesn't allow for vibes. <laughs> I think I, I think we got another clothing line to the Remchuk uh, <laughs> clothing hoose. I like avoid the grind I'm and a I'm a vibe. vibe. I think I'm a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so what's our number. What's our number for clinching right now? I'm that was 69, a nine, bro. Is it nine magic number no. six? Yeah. Is it six? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So if we win, so we need Vegas. Oh man, that was that 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 Oilers win and that LA Kings win was so huge on boxing out Vegas. Oh I want nothing more than for them to not make the playoffs and Jack Eichel can kiss his own ass. Jack Eichel can kiss his own ass. Yeah. So we've got idiot. six. So we need we need Vegas. So Vegas loses whether they play tonight. Yeah, they do. But they got a pretty, they got a bit of a layup matchup on home against Jersey. Um, yeah, Come on, do. Jersey. Yeah, let's go. And then Vegas also plays on Wednesday against Washington rematch of the 2018 or 2017 cup final. Um, so that should be a, that's one where Vegas can lose. And if we can take care of Dallas on home ice, we would drop our magic number in one night down to two. Yeah, the others need a, oh. need a little luck And then we here. just need to win the next game. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, even Edmonton now, has, like when Edmonton you, has six games left on the schedule. I just say they win the next three, wrap it up themselves. How's that, Tyler? But that's what I was going to say. Like, even if Vegas runs the table here and doesn't lose a game the rest of the year, highly unlikely, all Edmonton would have to do is beat like Columbus, San Jose, and Vancouver, and they're in, right? I'm not worried. I'm not worried about them catching us. I'm worried about them getting in, period, because uh, if they can get in, they could be, if, if, if Leonard can be between the pipes, could be a nuisance. And so, and then the only way they do get in is if they take out Vegas or if they take out LA and that means we'd play them in the first round. I I'm not overly concerned about that just because like LA has five games left Anaheim, Chicago, Anaheim, Seattle, Vancouver. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Chicago has one win in their last 10. I want to, LA's better, better poised to do it. I want to ask you something else about the Nashville game, just because I'm, I'm thinking about it now. Dry settle, obviously hat trick. Mm-hmm. How was, I imagine Kennedy was just burst into a ball of light at that point. Yeah. That, <laughs> we were joking about that on ONR. Uh, Cause Rick, Rick told her, he was like, Hey, when dry settle scored that last goal, I think I saw him point up into the stands at you, Kennedy. And I was like, yeah, he would have been pointing at a puddle. Like Kennedy was, yeah, she had a good time and she partied hard after too, which was great. I saw her double fist and I respect it. Yeah. Um, there were a good time was had. This is a bit of a random story, but on the last night, it was the last three people standing. Everyone else went to bed. Bearded Brad and Cam, they didn't leave their beds for an entire day at one point, but there were three people standing left on the trip on the last night of partying. And it was myself, Rick and Kennedy. And we went out to a karaoke bar. And this karaoke bar was a vibe. The bartender smoking a dart the whole time. Was it because you were there or because it was a vibe? It was a vibe. I was just a part of the vibe. I did not add. I was just around. Um, but I like the, to think I'm a vibe. The bartender is like this lady in her 60s. And she is crushing a dart, like hanging out of her mouth while she pours drinks. Um, even though right next to the... definitely Rita. <laughs> yeah, probably. Right next to the bar, there was a sign that said no smoking. And then you're like looking at her and you're like, what? This guy goes up. So it's a karaoke bar in Nashville, heavier dude, like a big boy. He's got a ginger beard. He's wearing like an old school trucker cap. This guy's going up to sing karaoke and I lean over to Kennedy and I'm like, this guy's going to be good. Watch the beat kicks in for the song. (laughs) This dude just raps a Millie by Lil Wayne. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) All right. And he just killed it. It was so good. He was like the best performance of the night, but he goes up there and I'm like, we're getting like some Garth Brooks or something here. Chris Stapleton. Yeah. And then it kicks in and I'm like, wait, I turned to Millie. Is this a Millie? It was. I like that. I like that a lot. Not enough old boys are rapping a Millie these days. I find. Um, I saw ginger beards. I saw a guy the other day, and he was like a heavier set white dude, and he was playing uh, outdoor pickup basketball against a bunch oh, of yeah. like, street ballers in New York. You saw, and he made it rain, and his like vertical was one inch, and they're like, <laughs> "We need a nickname for this superhero because he was just unbelievable." Oh, yeah, that's like Kevin from The Office. That guy what apparently was was playing basketball, shooting the ball. And oh, really? they have the one, they have the one basketball episode where they're playing in the back. And the whole joke was like, they just kept filming him while he was just messing around and he was just draining everything. But yeah. in the show, he, yeah, he never got picked. So I like the end of the show in the credits, they just show him just draining everything. And Michael Scott just clearly wouldn't pick him. Because <laughs> Kevin. Michael Scott's all about appearances. Um, That's funny. So we, you mentioned future nation vacations, Jay, we were talking about this a lot on the trip and like what spots could we hit up next year yes. after experiencing Nashville and experiencing Vegas, got to do it again. Both of them got to be on the list next year. Right. I say, I, I, I mean, yes, but then that means do we add a third trip? Like, I don't know what kind of time do we got? I'd love to go on like a, like an original six, if you could like a Chicago, Chicago? maybe. Chicago would be awesome. Oh, I've been to games. Chicago would be good. Unreal. Chicago would be good. good. Boston would be good. Mm-hmm. Boston. The be thing unreal. I told, I was talking to Jared, the whole group of us down there were talking about it. And we were like, oh, what about like Seattle? Would enough people want to go to Seattle? Yeah, I, you probably could. Like, I think there's a partnership to be had. Um, you see, Macklemore is now an owner of the team. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Macklemore and Keyshawn. Ooh. Marshawn Lynch. Marshall, yeah. Marshawn? Yeah, Marshawn Lynch. 
<laughs> he was doing yeah. donuts in a Zamboni. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, like so, Seattle would be sick. I'd go to Seattle on a trip. That'd be fun as fuck. The thing I was telling the guys on the trip, though, like how much, are, how many people who come on this, like what are, what's the priority? Is it and in, in what order? Hockey, weather, party. Because like if if hockey is number one, hockey and experience. I don't think weather weather like we're Canadians. We can we can weather through anything. Um, I think it's going towards uh, an experience because if they play Nashville, say in December, it's not warm there in December. It's like five to 10 degrees, but we would still go. What were the three Uh, kinds of Kentucky travelers, Jay? What were the three reasons people would go in Kentucky? Oh, to party, uh, to shop, culture. Yeah. See the history. Yeah. 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 Same on these trips. So like, like weather's nice. If it's nice to have, it's not a need to have. So it's just like awesome experience in hockey. So Nashville has that. They just happen to, you happen to go in April when, you know, it all feels like a Canadian summer plus all the humidity. Um, but like awesome places to go. It'd be cool to go to Tampa. It'd be cool to go to Dallas. It would be cool to do a LA Anaheim combo. Um, it'd be cool to go to New York. Uh, it'd be cool to go to Columbus. I, I, I'd go to Columbus for sure. I'd, I'd go to Carolina. Columbus is apparently unreal. Yeah. I hear great things about that city. So it'd be cool to go to school experience it all. Um, and it like, obviously always going back to the ones that you know are super awesome and popular that will deliver IE of Vegas or in Nashville, but it'd be cool to mix in some other ones too. So yeah, Seattle could work for sure. You could do a, 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 a you know, a 30, 40, 50 person trip, uh, there. Cause uh, Seattle will probably be fun to go experience. I'm sure we can go find some fun to get into. And you know, it's the newest arena in the league and, you know, it's Seattle. So you always probably have a good chance of winning. So that's also exciting, you know, and it's only an hour and a half flight. Like it's, it's a lot cleaner trip for sure. Did you time that one correctly to do a multi-sport trip to Seattle? Yep. Well, you can do that in a lot of markets. All right. Mm-hmm. You can do that in Chicago. You could take, you could do that in Florida. You can do that in Carolina, you can do it in Buffalo. A multi-sport trip would be cool. We've never done anything like that before. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the, maybe that's the, like the, the one thing it, it's, it's, yeah. Sometimes the NFL tickets are tough to get, uh, in terms of like the scope and size uh, of, of the trip. Like if you're, you know, if you're 40, 50 people, it might be tough to get that many tickets to a game like that, or you just have to pay a bit of a premium to do so, but that would be wicked. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. The LA one is interesting too, because like, even if you just stayed in LA, like if you had a bus to take you out to the ducks game, like that's very, very doable, right. To just go out there. Watch I'd rather and come stay. Back. I'd rather stay in the Anaheim, Anaheim closer to Anaheim. Cause that's where all the wicked beaches are and stay oh. near there. Yeah. That's fair too. I didn't even think. Right? And then way. you go, you go like LA game first and then like bus to down to your, to your hotel near Anaheim beach day, then watch the ducks game or Disneyland, then go watch the ducks game. Um, I feel like that would be cool, but you know, some people might, might want to go to Hollywood and stuff, but whatever you mix it up. But I think, you know, yeah, we should, uh, I think we should definitely do Nashville again. Uh, obviously Vegas is, is it, it'll all depend, I guess, on schedule and when, like what time of the week the games are. Cause like, obviously like for you guys to go from Tuesday to Saturday, it's kind of a, like, that's a big trip. Like it's like, Did it, feel know, like it was too world. long. Your Amtrak? It was definitely one day too long. Yeah. yeah. In a, in, a, in a perfect world, you just want to go for two nights, three days, two nights. Yeah. And I think Get even if it was a market, three nights wouldn't have been bad, but four nights was a bit, a bit long. Yeah. Hear me out. We do Anaheim, LA. Then we do the three hour bus ride up to Bakersfield. <gasps> <laughs> and visit Stuart Skinner and go, Why? Yeah, I mean, you could, right? Like, if if they played, if they played Bakersfield in between, you Make could it do like it. A real it's, pure hockey trip, like you attend three hockey awesome. games. I just three all I hear is all I hear about when when you hear what all that bus travels is just dollar signs. Uh, yeah. like we always try to make these affordable, but like you could, we could unlock that option. Like getting tickets to a Bakersfield game wouldn't be a problem. You could make that call while you're there. I feel like there's Oilers fans who have always mentally said, I'd like to see the AHL team play, but when the hell am I ever going to get the chance? 
you may be surprised at the demand for that trip. Yeah, it's unique, yep. right? That's the thing. It goes back to the experience side. I went to a Bakersfield game. It was uh, it was neat. <laughs> Why'd you pronounce well, it was E? It was neat because it was like a, <laughs> Why'd you pronounce it was like a noon. Time? It was like a noon game on like a Thursday, yeah. and it's the it was the in the HL they always have in the market center, and they always have like a skip school game. So it was full of like elementary and junior high kids. Oh, isn't that neat? Sorry. I shouldn't say elementary. I think it was junior high and high school. And so like, it was just pandemonium. It was like, it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, in-person TikTok before TikTok. <laughs> They're all doing it like their the one Eskimos the game every year. They let all the kids go to that one Eskimos game every year we go to. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was hilarious. Um, but, uh, it was, yeah, it was neat. I went to a San Jose Barracudas game. It was pretty cool. Like an AHL game. I wouldn't say it was neat, but it was cool. Well, I also, I, I, if I'm really going to pump my own tire here, folks in Bakersfield, I hit a seven ten split. Wow. Very impressive. Yeah. I was shocked. For those of you who play baseball, that is when you foul four balls in a row. Yeah. So that uh, Bakersfield has a special place in my heart. <laughs> um, the hell of a yes, bowling alley in Chicago we went to, speaking of trips and bowling. Hmm. Oh, yeah. We trip, bowling the bowling alley in Chicago is worth a trip alone. It was right beside our hotel. So it was just, yeah. But yeah, Chicago would be great. But speaking about our next travel trip, I think this Jay's trip is getting more real by the day, folks. Let's do it. Your M uh, Chalmers, would you come on a Blue Jays weekend trip? I would love to go to Toronto on a Blue Jays weekend trip, especially with Bag Milk, big Jays guy. I just picked up a couple of fresh hats yesterday. Two brand ready. new hats. Love the black one. You are all in. Like you've spent a g- have you have spent more money this year? Correct me if I'm wrong on Jays merch than you would have in the last year on Oilers merch. I don't buy Oilers merch, so yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Like two the Oilers jerseys, two hats. What's the matter with you? No, I rep Nation Gear and Nation Gear alone. Mm-hmm. Here, here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Jay's gear, Kennedy and I were trying to brainstorm new ideas for uh, some Blue Jays Nation. Nation How about gear. this, Tyler? Yeah. You, let me let me let me run this one by you. Uh, do not bet on the Jays starting pitcher bag milk. That's the T-shirt. <laughs> starting pitching's been rough unless it's Alec Manoa, the big man. Make sure this is Big Jays guy. Actually, that's yeah. a decent idea. And big Jay's girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually that that could and be a hit. They say, hey, you can't do that. You say, this has nothing to do with the Blue Jays. This has to do with Jay Downton. Big Jay's guy is me. That's right. And they, they can't take your name away from you, Jay. No. Hmm. That's actually interesting. We had some other ideas too. I was gonna have one that says box make me horny, but that was Unrelated. Box. That was <laughs> <Horny. What? laughs> I'm a vibe. Uh, <laughs> wow. You just, <laughs> it stem, it stems to what part, of the, what part like a... of the box makes you the most horny. <laughs> it, we were watching a Jays game while we were on the trip and they showed a Bach and Ooh. I just leaned over to Rick and I was like, God, a good Bach gets me horny. And he laughed. And then we were like, that'd be a funny t-shirt. If you just saw a guy at a baseball game walking around with a shirt that says box, make me horny. You'd be like, what's going on? Was there context? Hey, Tyler? Okay. It's a bigger <laughs> shirt than just a blue Jay shirt. It may have legs. Yeah. 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 Uh, Johan Sebastian, my favorite one. Um, yeah. <laughs> can I ask for Was well, speaking of the trip and t-shirts, was there something that happened while I was getting messages from multiple people saying we need a, I am bag milk shirt. Was there some kind of context for that that I was missing out on? Yes. <laughs> Can we talk about okay. it? Yeah. Is there any follow up <laughs> statements there? I am boxed. He's so horny. There, there, there is yeah, someone so out there. Horny right now. There is someone out there who is desperate to know what bagged milk looks like. And that person could have had the chance to see it if bagged milk had come on the trip. And the idea was. We get a bunch of shirts that all say, I am bagged Mayor milk. Sohi? And if the opportunity were to ever arise where we're in the same room as this person, we should just have staff shirts that say, I am bagged milk to confuse said person. That's a oh, lot. Okay, that's a lot. That's so a lot went, of ground to cover to 
confuse one person. Yeah, you kept it on the inside there. Yeah, let's launch. <laughs> let's launch a whole line of T-shirts to confuse a single person. <laughs> it was not my person, idea. If that single person wants to hit me up, I'll just send you a screenshot of his face. Like, no one <laughs> buys them. We're fucked. I was just like, I was very confused because it would have been, I guess, after the Nashville game, you guys were all out celebrating, and I'm sitting here in my own pity and. FOMO. And then my phone starts blowing up saying, we need I am bag milk shirts. I'm like, okay. Yep. It also What's works on, on the and level of like, it is a common occurrence for people to walk up and be like, what does bag milk look like? Or like on this trip, people would come up, Hey, where's bag milk? Which one's bag milk? And it's like, Oh, he's not here on this trip. So like, you'll never find out. Whereas if we all just had, I am bag milk shirts, it would add a layer to the confusion. All right. So we're yeah. shenanigans. Why don't we just put? Why don't we just get sticker name tags and just write bag milk on them? Yeah. Just skip making well, the shirt. That's interesting. Then yeah. I don't get a free. Sh- then I don't get a new shirt though. Why well, he's the you boss? Want a shirt that says I am bag milk. Yeah. Wouldn't that cause drama for you every other day you wear it? People would. They'd never see it coming. You know. They'd be like, he wouldn't wear that shirt. <laughs> I, uh, I know. I, I, I want, I'd like to let you know that we got an email from the National Predators. Uh, Waz, Waz took a, made a photo standing in front of Bridgestone pointing at it saying, you suck natural predators. Yeah. We get an email from the Preds saying classy. Yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, also that is why I left the last podcast, by the way, my oh, phone was, what? my phone was ringing a lot. So I thought that there was something <laughs> more important than it was. But okay. oh, can I, it was but, abrupt but, as fuck. I won't lie but, to you. So we contacted Nashville. We're like, oh shit. And they're like, no, we love it. And if we win, trust me, we're going to use this against you. Okay. Oh, so and I was like, perfect. That's, that's, that's a team and social media team that gets it. So beef so sells cool. records. Yeah, so so I, 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 I thought, are they going to like that decal that you put on the building? I don't know. That I Absolutely. would like to clear my name of that. That was not me. <laughs> I think that you know one, who brought one, stickers to come. the game. That one might come with another email uh, that might not be as collaborative, but okay. We'll they deal can't with hold us responsible for people who are nation sticker owners putting stickers on shit. We can't be responsible for every sticker. Yeah, issue. but there's there's a bunch of social content celebrating. Do you remember when we put stickers in the Hudson's bathroom early in our business history, Jay? Yeah, yeah that was different, but yes. yes. Jay and I used to go out stickering your Amtrak as a means of promoting the site. We're like, okay, Let's go put a hundred stickers up around town. I don't remember why we had like a bunch left. So we just stickered the inside of a Hudson's bathroom. Who was a sponsor of the website? They're like, why'd you guys put stickers up all over our bathroom? We're like, like it wasn't that? us. <laughs> like, There's nobody in the world knows what it is but you. I'm like, we'll take them down though. <laughs> we made magic to it. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that was not me on the sticker when the predators said that take or like classy to the you suck thing. And Waz was just like, Oh, I was told I had to take it down. It's hilarious because whenever, when they intro the Oilers in the arena, they go like starting line for the Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid. Then the whole crowd yells out at once. You suck. And then Darnell nurse, you classy. suck. And then it's yeah, Jay Woodcroft classy. and they go, you suck too. So I thought it was funny that they were like, <laughs> yeah. I thought oh, at yeah, that point, upset. Yeah, okay. I wish he just gave us more context in the email. He just goes, well, yeah, classy period. I was like, Oh, well, and that's why I abruptly left is because my phone's ringing from multiple people and I'm silencing it. Silencing it. Yeah. And then I'm the only one in the office at that point. So I'm like, uh, all right, I gotta go. Cause then I got the screenshot sent to me of the email and I was very confused. So there you go. There's the backstory. But yeah. Well, upon further discussion, they loved it. And they're just like, if we win, we're coming for you. And I was yes. like, well, you did, did that's you how you mash. do it. Yeah. yeah. Leon Dreisaitl ma- maintains his position as owner of the Nashville Predators. Two straight hat tricks for Leon in two straight games in Nashville. You got, you love to see it. You, you just, love to see, you yeah. love to see back to back Smitty shootouts. Oh man. Shout out, brother. You know I what the old boy that. You got to give the guy credit because he's battled his way back into a 9-11 save percentage. And a lot of us, myself included, have said he sucked all year. So when he's maybe, well, it's only maybe he just needed to get, you know, find his game again, coming back from injury. Maybe he had to do it. And we just had to pay the, the price in terms of poor performance until uh, he got there. But man, he's there. A little What's the save percentage now? 9-11. A thousand. Triggered. Triggered. Yep. 
Understandable. And he's expected for the next three games if you look on the website. I don't I feel about that. Up, but no, they'll probably mix it up. You got you to get Miko back in at some point. So they'll probably, I bet you they'll go Smith on Wednesday. And yeah. then who do we play on Friday? Colorado. And Miko Colorado. played good against Colorado last time. Just one yeah, of these bozos yeah. needs to stay hot for like six weeks. And we can That's exactly so right. Like you have yeah. to get one of them hot. And right now it's looking like Mike Smith is well on his way to becoming very hot. I don't know. Miko's well, had a good year, man. We're well, let's, nah, I'm let's, Smith. but let's, Miko, yeah. Miko. yeah well, well, but let's talk about the Vegas game here for a second. The Oilers played really well defensively yeah. as well. Like goalie, we gave up some, a, a few high danger chances, which is always going to happen goalie stood in made a save but we we kept uh we kept the uh the golden knights at bay it was like a time release game though where the oilers had a slower start a little bit mike smith kept him in and then they poured it on more as the game wore on that was a really good game really yeah and to have four goals go up on the board and connor and leon are involved in none of them wild yeah wild. exactly you know in a, in a very important game like that like that was uh that was great that was such a big win, man. That was such a big win for so many reasons. And all of a sudden, my boy, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, turning into a shorthanded sniper this season. Oh, my God. He is he is a shorthanded assassin. What is that? Three goals for him now? Shorthanded? And all of a sudden, my boy, Warren Fogle, just can't stop scoring. Hey, <laughs> that's why we need you to call out more oh. people on this podcast so we can get some more scoring going. Maybe Jesse? Jesse's next up on the list? Playing well. Oh, man, I bet. I confidence. Bet. Oh, I don't know if you saw that. I bet yes, it, yes, it a score. And, uh, I thought he got a stick on that. Uh, and then the minute, the minute after CC scored or something, I, I think Spectre chimed in on my tweet saying you should have bet, you should have bet CC or something like that. Anyways, really doubling down on his anti yesy uh, mm-hmm. uh, angle. Do you think he just randomly picks guys to shit on just to troll us? Yes. Do you find it interesting that he's asked multiple people and none of them have taken the bait on it? No. Um, so Luke Meyer tweeted out Warren Fogle just told Tyler Uremchuk to shove it, LOL. And a bunch of people who replied to that guy's tweet <laughs> didn't understand the joke. Um, so one guy just goes, oh shit, my new favorite player then. Um, one guy goes, awesome. Tyler is a piece of work, a complete asshole, just an arrogant, disrespectful wannabe, but will never be just a little smart ass big picture. The players coach GM are fed up with these ignorant media. Um, and someone else said, good. Tyler's a tool. So yeah, you know, I'm making friends. Image, the image is getting fixed. Tyler's a vibe, everyone. Tyler's, Tyler's not a, vibe. a tool. He's hugging the mayor. Uh, Got a good chuckle out of that. All right. Uh, we could probably wrap this thing up here before we do. Got to give some love to twigandberries.ca. Shout out to Twig and Berries. 15% off with the promo code Nation15. And shout out to our friends at Points Bet Canada. How about this for a little wager if you want to look at it? I'm on Points Bet. I'm looking at the Hart Trophy odds. Connor McDavid Ooh. is five Ooh. to one or four to one to win the Hart Trophy. Really? Makes you think. Connie Mack for MVP. Points Bet Canada. Connie Mack? Honey, Matt. What are you <laughs> oh, it's not, dude. That anymore. Wow. You are a vibe. Honey, oh, God. God. There's no like way that's auntie. the first time you guys have heard him refer to his auntie that. from Guelph who makes good macaroni. That's not Connor McDavid. I'm not Tyler, the first one to have... Connie s- Mac. <laughs> that's delicious. I'm not the first one to say that um, for the record. Uh, you are to my ear holes. Mine too. Hopefully the last. You're working on this image thing this episode. I like it. I'm doing my best. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Who's richer? Fred Savage or the Malcolm in the Middle kid? Now which Frankie one? Muniz. Which Frankie one? Muniz Frankie, Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz. Show. Oh, Frankie no way. That show is huge. Find a guy to go against Fred Savage. It's a similar band. Uh, Zach Morris. Frankie Muniz. Yeah. 30 million. Um, Zach Morris, 1.5 and the first guy, Fred Savage, 14 mil. You know who's shockingly rich? Jail White. Hey, oh, yeah. like I'm glad her child one. actor. I'm glad Urkel's What's getting. he worth? Who? Urkel. Urkel. Jaleel White. Urkel. 
Oh, Gene. From that vein, Mario Lopez has got to be above oh, Mario Lopez. Well, oh, he's he's the richest saved them. by the Beller. He's the richest saved by the Beller. Oh, richest saved by the Beller. Richest Malcolm the Middler. Richest Degrassi. Well, maybe not Drake. Driz. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, is uh, what's that? What's Jaleel covered. White worth, your M check? Mario Lopez, 25. Urkel, 8. Hmm. 25 eight. is shockingly no, low for wrong how numbers, often man. I see Mario Jaleel Lopez. White's rich as shit. <laughs> He always talks about it. He's like, I'm yeah, Soldier Boy too. Like, yeah. He always talks about it too. Soldier Boy's rich as heck, man. You don't know that. Yes, no. I do. Jaleel Wait, how White. long he's been touring? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't heard a Soldier Boy song since it's Superman. Like that that you, you haven't know. heard you make it clap. Come on, <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe you that. heard she make it clap. She make worry. it clap. Uh, <laughs> what? What did she make clap? <laughs> The biggest TikTok of all time. She makes them fangs clap. You know. Tyler, how about that news I say you speaking to hip hop, but the baby shot that fucking guy trying to break into his house. Yeah. And then didn't press charges on the guy because he capped him. Yeah. And then he said, I'm glad you good or whatever he said. Just stay the fuck away from my house. And then he posted wow. on his Instagram. He's like, could have killed the guy today. Didn't. <laughs> I was like, yo. The baby killed the guy in Walmart. So yes, it wouldn't did. be the first time. He's hard as fuck. He for real shot a guy and killed him in Walmart. Yeah. The baby, can you stop shooting people, please? <laughs> nope. Didn't go to jail for either one. Both were legitimate self defense. Uh, she made a clap. Makes smash jams and he don't fuck around. The baby. And does not make a clap. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh let's wrap this thing up shout out to the hga group and doordash as well um this has been episode 371 connie mac and the boys are back in action on wednesday and we'll be back oh, on thursday no. doubles down on with Lily D. thanks for listening to another episode of the real life podcast don't want to miss any of our nonsense hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on twitter and instagram i will not accept connie mac <laughs>